Hi, my name is Matthew Patrick and I'm a fifth year PhD student in material science and engineering at Columbia University. And today I'm going to be talking about correlative electron microscopy for in situ studies of grain growth and thin films. The vast majority of useful engineering materials in the world are polycrystalline in nature, meaning they're made up of many small crystals called grains. It's no secret in the material science and engineering community that the size and shape of these grains, the microstructure of the material, have important impacts on the properties of the material, from mechanical strength to electrical resistivity. Unfortunately, this process is complex, and we don't have models that fully capture the behavior of grain growth and the evolution of these structures when you heat them or deform them or subject them to other processing conditions. This is in part because grain boundaries are quite complicated. They require at least five degrees of freedom to describe for just one boundary, three for the misorientation between the two crystals' lattices, and two for the crystallographic plane that divide them. But it's important to consider all five of these parameters. Grain boundaries are observed, for example, to have velocities that tightly correlate to this five-parameter grain boundary character distribution. The properties of grain boundaries are critical in understanding microstructure and microstructural evolution. For example, we consistently observe that higher energy grain boundaries are observed with lower frequency than their lower energy counterparts. We also observe grain boundary character distribution evolution as grains grow in real microstructures. Ultimately, we need more large-scale dynamic data to understand this process, because right now all of the data that we have is relatively coarse in time and relatively coarse in temperature. Thin films offer an excellent platform for studying grain growth in situ dynamically in the TEM. This is in large part because of their columnar microstructure. That is to say that their grain boundaries span the full thickness of the film and are perpendicular to the surfaces of the film, meaning their plane normals are perpendicular, or are, are perpendicular to the traces of the grain boundary. This means that when we take orientation maps by scanning an electron beam and indexing each point, we're able to reconstruct not only orientation texture, but also the grain boundary character in all five parameters for every grain boundary observed in the field of view. The problem is that this technique is slow, taking tens of minutes to acquire each map. Instead, to collect rapid, dynamic information, we need to turn to bright field imaging. This mode is fast and allows us to take videos at high time resolution, but it comes with the cost that it's difficult to segment it's hard to tell where one grain ends and one grain begins in regions like this of low contrast, or in regions like this where one grain might have contrast inside of it. Until recently, the only viable approach to measure these images has been hand tracing each and every grain boundary. But that's not practical when you have thousands of images from an in-situ experiment. Instead, we leverage the dozens of images left over from hand tracing in our group to train a machine learning model based on a UNET architecture we couple this with a targeted post-processing approach and are able to demonstrate statistical similarity between hand tracing results and results obtained via the UNET and post-processing approach. Most importantly, the technique generalizes to images of a new aluminum film, for example, as well as new materials like platinum and palladium with minimal retraining. This allows us to dynamically characterize grain growth as it happens in the microscope. On the left, you can see micrographs collected during an in-situ heating experiment over the course of about 40 minutes. And as you watch, you'll see the grains coarsen. This corresponds to the increase in grain size you see in this plot here, as well as the increasing temperature. Let me pull this back, and you can see very clearly that coarsening is captured by this grain boundary detection algorithm. But we can go a step further. Instead of just taking images, we can capture orientation maps statically before and after annealing. These orientation maps take something like 30 minutes to acquire each, but we are able to reconstruct the orientation texture evolution from beginning to the end of the uh, annealing step, as well as measure the five parameter grain boundary character distribution and how that's evolving in time. Most importantly, we're able to do this non-destructively and periodically throughout annealing in the same field of view on the same instrument during the same session which means we can correlate our dynamic data directly to these static maps, meaning that we can get dynamic information like grain boundary velocities or grain growth rates for a given grain and correlate them back directly to the orientations measured before and after. This allows us to project crystallographic information like grain orientation and in particular grain boundary character forward in time, carried as tags in the geometric data that we've acquired in situ. I hope I've convinced you that thin films offer a unique platform for dynamic grain growth studies. They offer one-stop, non-destructive, and dynamic characterization of microstructural evolution in the TEM, 
and we hope to use these new dynamic data to power the next generation of modeling for this complex process. Finally, I want to thank everyone who made this work possible.